Uh, and I'm um, very excited to be part of this um, session, uh, and it's really uh, heartwarming to hear so many people working in this area. So um, thank you, everybody who's spoken so far and who's to come. Uh, so uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about why, uh, from what I'm doing, um, I think that wellbeing, memory, and creative practice are important. Uh, and then I'm going to talk uh, about uh, my project, Remembering the Romans, um, in the Middle East and North Africa, which handily comes up with the acronym RETRO, um, about how we try to promote well-being in the project, though it's not technically a well-being project, it's a public engagement project, a different focus, um, some of the responses we had to it and some of the lessons learnt um, and how uh, I'm hoping to build on those in the future, um, and those now include a whole load of uh, other ideas that I've um, been sitting and filtering through today. Um, so, for me, um, the importance of well-being approaches, uh, I'm going to demonstrate through something that I think really didn't put this into action uh, when they did their project. Now, I'm not going to talk about this too much. It is a bit of a pet rant of mine, so quite happy to talk about it more. Um, uh, but uh, it's this arch. This is uh, a replica uh, of an arch from Palmyra that was set up in Trafalgar Square. Uh, and it was a really provocative thing to do uh, and it had um, very strong emotional reactions um, and people particularly people from uh, Syria and Iraq felt very strongly and um, so I was there asking people what their uh, responses to it were and this is just uh, a couple of the responses I was crying all the time it's my city uh, and this one in Arabic uh, translated we are, we are returning uh, and there are uh, more of these I'll quickly plug uh, my new World Archaeology Journal article, um, which looks more at the postcards if you want to, to read it. Um, uh, but while I was there speaking to people, nobody from uh, the um, organisation that set up the arch was there to speak to anybody. Um, and for example, one uh, woman who uh, came to speak to me uh, in floods of tears, she was only from Syria, she was a poet. This was all too much for her to see this put up um, and no care had been taken for how people might respond um, to, to this uh, being put up uh, and um, uh, I think that was beyond appalling personally. Um, so try and do something uh, a little bit better than that. Um, so the Remembering the Romans project um, was funded by the AHRC uh, through a cultural engagement, um, uh, their cultural engagement fund. Um, and it was a fairly short project, and I'll come back to why that um, was a bit of a problem for us. But uh, we did four day long workshops uh, in um, two smaller museums, the Petrie Museum in London and the Great North Museum in Newcastle. Uh, and here's a list of all my wonderful collaborators. Um, and I really could not have done it, um, because I am in not particularly creative myself, uh, without Sarah Ekdawi, uh, Miranda Creswell, and Rory Carnegie, um, and my lovely uh, master's students. So if you want to know a bit more about the project, that's our website, so you can see the gallery of all the, the work produced on there, and little bits of information about what we did. Um, so the workshops themselves uh, were deliberately designed to be very informal. Um, the one at the top is the Peach Museum, this one is the Great North Museum, um, and uh, that's Miranda, uh, the smiley person, uh, and you can see the back of Sarah's head there. Um, so in the workshops themselves, uh, we invited people to respond to objects uh, through um, creative writing, photography, and um, uh, drawing. Uh, and in particular, the workshops were aimed at Middle Eastern communities um, uh, who have had uh, a lot of their cultural heritage um, very um, violently taken away from them. Uh, so we wanted to create opportunities for people to make friends again uh, with their cultural heritage. Um, so there was nothing about this project that was um, trying to generate new data for archaeology or or anything like that, we wanted to use the archaeology uh, to try and help um, people heal um, some uh, 
uh, very strong wheeze. Um, so in order to do that, we try to put in place um, various measures to promote well-being. And I will admit um, that we sort of did this. This was what I felt would be right. I am not a healthcare professional, and that is something that I would very much like to have um, if I was to do a, a project like this. So um, I think we sort of got it right, but I'm sure there's ways we could improve. So in particular, we wanted to make sure that if we had poked someone and had um, caused uh, some form of crisis um, uh, or distress, that there was a space that people could go to uh, that meant that they could be off, we could go and speak to them privately, um, and uh, we had on hand um, uh, resources to, to point people in the direction of other people who might be able to help, because I am not a healthcare professional. Um, so, for example, at the Petrie Museum, uh, we uh, did the workshops on a Monday, which is when the museum is shut to the public, so people had the entire space to themselves, uh, and the staff had very uh, kindly offered that if we needed it, we could take people into the staff room. Uh, and in the Great North Museum, uh, we um, had a separate space that we worked in, uh, that again had a little kind of separate area if people needed it. Um, we particularly um, uh, tried to do this using um, gentle engagement, which so I've worked with Miranda Creswell before. Um, uh, interestingly, on a hospital garden project uh, called A View from the Garden. Um, and we were very um, clear at the beginning of that particular project and this project as well that we didn't want to be imposing ourselves on people. If people wanted to join in, they could. We weren't going to force anybody to join in with what we were doing. Uh, and we also weren't going to stand up and do what I'm doing now, uh, which is give a, uh, a talk to people. Um, so. Uh, we kept it as informal as we could. The only really formal-ish part of the uh, days was at the beginning, the curators uh, would provide a little introduction uh, to their museum and some of the objects that were in it. Um, but also everybody joined in, and somebody this morning uh, mentioned that um, volunteers can feel uh, upset if um, they don't feel that the, the people they're working with are as emotionally engaged with what they're doing as they are. Um, so we all joined in, whether we were comfortable with drawing or um, photography or writing. Um, uh, I'm absolutely dreadful at drawing stick people as really as, as good as my drawing gets, but I went and did it anyway. Um, uh, and I think that really helped people feel that we were just as much um, uh, at a disadvantage, I suppose, I mean, that's maybe not the right words, but um, uh, we were experimenting as well. We weren't necessarily there to be the people who knew everything about everything. Um, we actually chose not to do very formal feedback, uh, probably much to the upset of the um, impact coordinators of my uh, university who would have liked me to have nice forms uh, that everybody filled in. Um, uh, so we asked people just to um, write in a guest book instead. Um, uh, and uh, so this is the guest book. Here, this is actually some of my uh, writing with me fiddling around with um, silver um, foil. Um, and, uh, and people were able just to contribute to that um, throughout the day. So it was a very non-scientific way of, of gathering information, but we wanted people to feel as comfortable as possible. Um, uh, um, we also made sure that there was plenty of the flour uh, on hand for people to nibble on. Um, I am from the Middle East, I'm Iraqi. Um, Everybody loves the flower, so <laughs> if you're going to get try and kind of um, uh, work with a uh, particular community, um, particularly a Middle Eastern one, uh, food is generally a good a good way in. Um, so quite similarly to, to Human Henge, we also did uh, reflections uh, one year on, and this all happened rather um, organically. Um, so we co-wrote. Um, uh, an article for uh, a, a new journal called Equiersen, uh, which is for creative engagement in history and archaeology. Um, if you have a creative project, you're not quite sure uh, where you want to put it, I can highly recommend working with Sean Graham from Equiersen. It's um, online, open access journal, uh, and it was again very informal, not 
not the same as publishing in something big and scary. Um, and everybody who was involved in the project, whether they were a museum curator uh, or someone who came for, for you know, half the day, um, was invited to contribute. Um, I didn't actually know whether anybody would take me up on the offer, um, but uh, lots of people did. Uh, if you want to read what we wrote, uh, you can write it there. Uh, read it there, sorry. Um, and um, I asked people to write 150, 200 words um, uh, on how they felt that uh, uh, being involved in the project had uh, changed their way of um, thinking about um, the Middle East uh, and um, uh, being in museums. Um, uh, and when I finished writing it, I realised uh, I had put no references in this journal article whatsoever, uh, and that was actually quite liberating, um, because I wanted the voices of the participants to come out rather than uh, any uh, you know, try and kind of shoehorn it into some particular theoretical perspective or whatever it might be. So uh, what I'm going to do now is just read to you um, some of the responses. I apologise, my cat walked in here. Um, so, uh, this is Heba Abdel Nawad. Um, she is actually uh, an archaeologist, and I think probably at about the same time now she's presenting in the Archaeological Failures um, uh, session. Uh, so, this is what uh, she wrote, uh, that's what she produced. Uh, Within the walls of the Petrie Museum, the multiple, difficult, and contested stories of the emergence and the development of the field of Egyptian archaeology in its collections are entangled. As an Egyptian archaeologist, I wandered around its galleries, guided by my professional knowledge of the objects and absorbed by my native memories of the sites. I could not help but question to what extent are we, the local communities, involved in the recollection and modern shaping of the memories of our ancient past. In a limestone depiction of the head of Queen Nefertiti, I found my answer. The Amarna period provided a distinctive analogy of the complicated relationships between the community of place and the community of experts within the field of Egyptian archaeology. In establishing his regime, Akhenaten adopted an inward-looking, exclusive strategy. He isolated himself geographically, philosophically, culturally and politically from the population, building a wall around his new capital. Similarly, Egyptology could be seen as an insular discipline, with ancient Egypt presented as an exotic, separate entity, disconnected from Egypt's modern realities and the rest of the ancient world. Local communities feel disenfranchised and are to a great extent regarded as a threat to heritage conservation. I'm going to cut a little bit, but in approaching objects through the creative means of writing a postcard, I have instantly initiated a personal dialogue with the past. I felt more empowered to write my own story freely, regardless of any prescribed disciplinary measures or boundaries. Uh, and this one is Nina Mitchell. Um, uh, she says, Amazing, inspiring, engaging. A few words to describe my memories of the day I spent at this workshop at the Petrie Museum. As a non-archaeologist of Middle Eastern origin, I was not going to pass up the opportunity to roam around this stunning collection <coughs> and create new memories built upon our shared past. I won't lie, the Baklawa was also a pool. It was such a privilege to spend the day surrounded by these objects that had made their way in many ways to London. The experts were so generous with their time and knowledge. Their patience helped me to start to understand the objects in the museum. I did feel completely out of my depth and faintly terrified that others in the group seemed very artistic. What drew me to my objects? I think I did what any human does when faced with uncertainty and clung to an object I was familiar with and at least I knew what it was used for. And that little jug was very beautiful. The idea of photographing my object appealed to me as it provided me with a stepping stone to creating a wonderful memory and it freed me up from the worry that my lack of creative ability would spoil my end product. <coughs> it is almost inevitable that non-expert visitors to any museum will stroll past displays with very little connection being made in spite of the fact that as a visitor you clearly have the intention of wanting to interact with the museum and its objects. Providing a relaxed and informal environment at the museum enabled us to respond to the object teasing out those connections through writing, drawing and photography ensured that we came away with a much deeper understanding and many happy memories. I think what really comes out of that one 
is that for us, museums are quite safe spaces. We quite enjoy being in them. We might be, feel quite relaxed to spend quite a lot of time in them. But for Muna, she would probably have just rushed through fairly quickly, feeling that she wasn't really supposed to be there. But through being in this project, she was given a little bit of extra time just to sit, be with the objects, get to know them a little bit, and eat some of um, so I won't um, read out this one, but you can go to the um, uh, article and read it. I'll just very briefly tell you about this one. This is Florence and Tandiwe Wilson, uh, who were a mother and daughter. And what was quite interesting is um, quite a few people came who were parent and child. Um, and that was quite nice. I think they sort of supported each other while they were there. Quite a lot of people talked about the fear of being involved in these things. So was, people obviously came with a, a little support person with them. Um, and Florence, who was the mother, was extremely nervous about being there. She came because her daughter, Fandiwe, sort of made her come. Um, and uh, really didn't want to, to get involved. Um, but had seen this pot um, and um, recognised it as something that um, she would have used in her village in Zimbabwe. Um, and through a little bit of very gentle persuasion and a little bit of chatting from me, um, uh, eventually was persuaded to, to, to draw it uh, and write about it. Uh, and then they came to an exhibition we did of some of this work in um, upstairs at the Ritzy in Brixton. Uh, and Tandiwe said, this has transformed her mother. Her mother has always loved being in museums and, and the past, uh, but now feels really confident um, and was really excited to be part of the publication. Uh, and this was really lovely because she was so nervous uh, when she came in. Um, so, some of the, the lessons learnt, um, the importance of time. This project, the AHRC gave us three months to do this project. This was no time at all to do this project. Um, and in particular, it was really difficult to build up trust. Um, uh, the Middle Eastern community is not necessarily a very easy one um, to uh, uh, connect to, even if you are part of it yourself. Um, and uh, doesn't feel comfortable um, uh, necessarily coming out into a group and saying, oh, I'm, I'm also from the Middle East, you have to come to um, sort of hide a little bit um, and not say where we're from. Um, so I needed more time to be able to build up that trust and um, we didn't have as many people as I would have liked um, who were of a Middle Eastern background uh, being involved. We did have some and that was really wonderful. Um, but I think we could do better if I had more time. Um, and I think the other thing that probably didn't help with that was that we, I chose a museum. Uh, and as shown through Muna's um, contribution, I'm comfortable in a museum. I'm sure most of you are really comfortable in a museum and you view it as a really friendly, lovely space. Uh, but that is not the case for everybody. Um, and I think that was one reason why it was just really difficult to, to get people through that door. Um, and in the next project, um, I'm going to go out of a, spa out of a museum space uh, and um, uh, try to use spaces um, that are more familiar to the people here in the project. So the next project, very quickly, uh, yeah, it's finished now. is this one. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Done. Thank you. Thank you.